What's going on guys? I'm Will Walker and today is Film School Friday. One, two, three, listen. Today I thought we could talk about some camera settings, some film history, the exposure triangle, and what settings you can use to help you achieve that more cinematic look. So what am I talking about? Well, with film cameras, especially this SLR, which stands for Single Lens Reflex. So the way that these things work, you have your camera lens, you have a mirror on the inside which bounces up into this prism. There's another mirror in here and then back here to your viewfinder. The light comes through the lens, bounces off here into the prism, into the viewfinder. That's what you see when you're ready to take the picture. You simply press the shutter release button. That mirror flips up, exposing the film in the back of the camera for a fraction of a second, goes back down, that's your exposure. This was 125th of a second. Then what do you do? You advance the film one frame and you click it again. Well, with the advent of the movie camera, they figured out this format of 24 frames per second where film was constantly moving and there was a 180 degree shutter half circle. And what that would do was there was a hole and this half circle would rotate around and every time it would unblock that hole, it would expose the film on one frame, 24 frames per second. Since it was a half circle, you double that to get 1 48th of a second at 24 frames per second. I know, it's a little bit confusing. Fast forward to the digital years and we're not shooting on film anymore, but we're shooting on DSLRs. See, we've gotten used to these Hollywood films. All of your favorites as a child were most likely shot on film, depending how old you are. We've gotten used to this format, 1 48th of a second shutter speed at 24 frames per second. I think it's actually 23.976 and we just round up to 24, but bear with me. So our brains have gotten used to that Hollywood cinematic look onto your camera. Since most cameras don't have a 1 48th of a second, we round up with shutter speed to 1 50th. And that gives us a nice natural looking motion blur. Faster than that just looks jittery and choppy and weird. Does that make sense? So I just want to jump right into some real world settings with some real footage and how you can start to get more natural looking footage to make your videos more cinematic. First things first, and that's putting your camera into manual mode. Then we can start going over the exposure triangle, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Shutter speed is how long the shutter stays open during the exposure. Anything that happens while the shutter is open is recorded. So using somebody running as an example, using a slow shutter speed, say a 30th of a second, and the runner would be subject to motion blur. A fast shutter speed, say 1,000th, and you'd freeze the action. Your camera lens acts much like the pupils in your eyes. There's an iris that can be open or closed to allow more or less light in, depending on the lighting situation. The same way your pupils dilate in a dark room to adjust so you can see better. This is known as your aperture and is referenced using f-stops, where we say f2.8 would be a very wide aperture, letting in a lot of light, and f22 being a very small aperture, letting little light in. Aperture also affects your depth of field and how much is in focus, where wide apertures offer shallow depth of field. And finally, ISO. ISO was the scale to rate how sensitive a film stock was to light. ISO 100 would be less sensitive to light than, say, ISO 1600, forcing us to use wider apertures and slower shutter speeds, but yielding finer grain patterns where high ISOs were grainier. The digital world has adopted this scale and now uses it to rate the light sensitivity on camera sensors. Instead of grain, we refer to it as noise, and it can get pretty nasty in the higher ISOs, even though cameras are getting better and better with low light capabilities. Each of these three things directly affects the other two, hence the exposure triangle. Okay, now that you've had a crash course in manual exposure, let's put our knowledge in effect with some real life workshop examples. A common task is drilling holes at the drill press. Let's start off with the baseline of a 50th of a second shutter speed. I'm going to keep the aperture constant at f7.1 and the ISO in this shot is 800. Next, I bumped up the shutter speed to 1 250th of a second, keeping the aperture the same and raised the ISO to 2000. Note the sharper, crisper chips flying off. This doesn't look natural as there's less motion blur. To illustrate this point at home, pick up the closest pencil and perform your best rubber pencil gag you learned as a kid. The same concept, just in real life and real time. Let's look at the clips side by side. Now here's a clip of me walking through the shop, a 50th of a second, and something higher. 
not as noticeable, but the 50th of a second shot is definitely cleaner and, and smoother. Running water is a great example. Here I'm rinsing a knife that I had just used to scoop some peanut butter. Alright guys and gals, that's it for this Film School Friday. Um, if you liked this, if this was helpful, let me know in the comments section. I promise I'm not changing from a woodworking, making, uh, doing stuff channel. I just, uh, I've, over the years, I've had so many people ask me so many questions about filming and camera settings and what camera should they use and all that stuff. So if you found this helpful, let me know in the comments section. Um, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and share this with somebody who you might think would enjoy it and would find it helpful. I've got a bunch of build videos on the way. I've been kind of just slammed with commissions and some sponsored projects and stuff like that. So if you have any questions on uh, camera settings on something that you want to learn uh, to better your videos in the workshop, please let me know in the comments section. And until next time, guys, I'm Will Walker. This is the William Walker Company Project Channel. I'll see you guys real soon. Thanks for watching.